Hi friends, welcome to Crack Grade B. We are back with yet another important lecture on the current affairs series that we are doing for you. So this is the PIB series from 21st of April to 30th of April 2022. So let's quickly begin with the first piece of news. That is International Financial Service Center Authority Fund Regulation. Okay, give me a moment. Let me change the color. Okay. So IFSCA has notified a comprehensive regulatory framework for investment funds in the official gazette on 19th April 2022. What is that? Registering the fund management entity. So a fund management entity will be registered with IFSCA and will be able to manage different type of fund and scheme subject to meeting the eligibility criteria. Okay, then green channel. Venture capital scheme or non retail scheme soliciting money from aggregated investor only shall qualify for a green channel. That is schemes filed can open for subscription by investor immediately upon filing with FCA. So they do not have to wait for the approval. The requirement of scheme size, number of investor, permissible investment etc. have to be detailed in the regulation. So the difference between here and here is here retail investors are involved here not. Then EFT, okay, exchange traded, sorry, ETF, exchange traded funds. Considering that ETF offers a mean to gain exposure to specific market or asset classes at low cost, registered fund manager in IFSC shall be able to launch not just index based on ETF, but also active ETF and commodity based ETFs. Okay, then stressed assets. Realizing the important roles of IFSC in the Gujarat, uh, sorry, in the government initiative for addressing the issue of NPA, a framework has been prescribed for the special funds to be launched by the fund managers in IFSC. So there are multiple things that IFSC is regulating, right? Let's move to the next one. This is Payroll Reporting India, a formal employment perspective. So. As per the EPF, Employee Provident Fund, over 5.18 crore new subscriber has joined between when? Between September 2017 to Feb 2022. Okay. Now, who release it? It is released by the National Statistical Office, NSO, under the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. Since April 2018, the ministry has been bringing out employment-related statistics in the formal covering the September 2000. 17 onwards using the information on the number of subscriber who have subscribed under three major scheme epf esic and nps right now there are few more data that that are for the monthly data and obviously this are like feb 2022 this this is you know uh, least important but if there is any data between you know uh, so let's say you are giving exam on July then the data of May June becomes important not before that so remember it read it based on your exams then let's move to the next one that is financial action task force so recently what happened is that Union Minister for Finance and Corporate Affair attended a FATF ministerial meeting in the Washington DC this was conducted alongside 2022 spring meetings of the World Bank Group okay, and the International Monetary Fund. So as you all know, in the World Bank Group, there are five organizations in total. So IBRD is usually the, you know, uh, uh, usually the uh, World Bank that we know means uh, most of the loans that IBRD gives on, uh, from the World Bank Group. Now, let's move to the next one. Okay, so let us know a few things about FATF that this was established on 1989 on the initiative of G7 group, important point. Okay, headquarter is on Paris, France at OE DC headquarter. Then the next piece of news is about Central Administrative Tribunal, which conducted a special drive across all the 19 bench of the tribunal. That's it. There is nothing more into it. Okay. Now, if you want to read about Central Administrative Tribunal, you will find it here. As you all know that you don't have to hunt any static part that is related to the current affair. 
let's now move to the next piece of news okay recently there is a data from the mospi ministry periodic labor force survey plfs which was conducted since when since 2017-18 okay so the latest annual PLF, uh, plfs report is available for the survey period of 2019-20 okay so as per this labor force in the country has increased steadily during 17-18 to 19-20 and on the other hand, other hand uh, unemployment rate declined obviously when there are more people who joins the industry for work the employment level comes down okay with this let's move to the next one let's move to the next one that is atal new india challenge 2.0 okay so atal innovation mission launched phase one of the second edition of atal new india challenge okay anic 2.0 on 28 april 2022 so what is this so this is a uh, Atal Innovation Challenge is a flagship program of Atal Innovation Mission by Niti Ayo. Right? Very important piece of news. Now, let's move to the next part. So, see, there are few Im other important parts as well, which you should know. For example, collaboration. Right? So, Niti Ayo collaborated with Ministry of Road and Transport Highway, ISRO, Ministry of Social Justice and Employment. Right? So, everything is there. Just go through it, you know, two times or three times based on how you can uh, how long you had been preparing if you are new into the preparation obviously you will have to go at least three to four times but if you are into the preparation for more than a year then going two times would be enough to getting all the uh, important things in one place okay so you see that granting aid is given to uh, is given rupees 80 lakh then equity investment up to INR 20 lakh 2% of the equity in this startup to be held by the government okay so the startup from the atal innovation mission 2% will be held by the government then the current round of anic concentration on 18 challenges from 17 sec seven sectors so what are those seven sectors these are those seven sector okay this are very important piece of news and these are the 18 challenges obviously you can't remember everything but yes just try to remember that yes there are you know challenge of medical device waste management agriculture tax sector. but what is there in the agriculture for example climate smart city or in the solid based municipal solid waste management this so this are the minute data it will hardly come and even if you want to remember you you cannot okay so because there are abundance of data and so don't try to get into that just know that there are you know seven sectors and there are 18 challenges okay in ANIC 2.0 so let's move to the next piece of news that is draft battery swapping policy okay what is battery swapping policy so Niti Aayog has planned for example you know let me tell you what is this for example you have an electric vehicle okay you have an electric vehicle and you want to go from Mumbai okay from Mumbai okay from Mumbai to let's say Delhi from Mumbai to Delhi can you go with your electric vehicle no because in between you will have to charge it multiple times so what Nitya <coughs> sorry So what Niti Aayog is telling is, so what Niti Aayog has proposed the solution, this is an innovative business solution where battery as a service will be given. For example, you are traveling with your, you know, electric vehicle and when your battery is about to die, you find a battery, you know, you find a provider who will swap your, uh, swap your battery which doesn't have charge with a charged one and you can take and you can continue your journey right so niti has come up with a draft policy and 
why why niti aayog is doing this because to if you are to harness the ev in the country then you have will have to build the infrastructure the charging infrastructure the swapping you know battery swapping policy so that is where this kind of uh, proposals comes into the picture battery as a service business model now let's move to the next piece of news okay report on third round october to december 2021 of quarterly employment survey very important this is done by whom labor bureau okay labor bureau attached office is ministry of labor and employment right so data period is from october december 2021 so what we see is that manufacturing sector is the largest employer accounting 39% of the estimated total numbers of workers followed by education sector almost 99.4 were registered under different status overall 23.55 of the units provided on job training to the workers then among nine sectors 34.87 of the units in health sector provided on job training followed by it bpos at 31.1% okay about 1.85 lakh vacancies were reported from nine sectors 85.3% of the workers were regular and 8.9% were the contract workers so this are very very important data and anything can be asked okay anything can be asked most mostly you know this is one of the uh, very very important things that manufacturing sector is the largest employer second is the employ uh, education sector with 22 percentage but yes all other data we can't deny that it is least important it is equally important and you will have to remember it right then let's move to the next one okay now we come to the one liner so fin calibration so this is being done by uh, introduced or you can say uh, this is uh, announced by the india post payment bank which is a 100% government owned entity of department of post right now what is this uh, fin calibration purpose is will be a permanent platform of ipbb to co create inclusive financial solution with the participating startups right so basically you have heard about hackathons so hackathons are a small period challenge right now this is something permanent for example if you have a fintech startup idea right which you want to build you can approach and if they provide platform you can co create with them right so that is uh, the importance then national panchayati raj day 22 this one i uh you you should remember because you know it is celebrated without any theme so something is unique about this without any theme where in pali in samba district right so that is why you should remember this then let's move to the next one okay so ministry of agriculture and farmal welfare organized kishan bhagidari प्राथमिकता हमारी कैंपेन ओके किसान भागीदारी प्राथमिकता हमारी कैंपेन बाय होम बाय मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर एंड फार्मर वेलफेयर देन लेट्स मूव टू द नेक्स्ट वन संकल्प से सिद्धि मिशन ओके दिस एन इनिशिएटिव बाय मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कल्चर कन्फर्डेशन ऑफ इंडियन इंडस्ट्रीज एंड इंडिया एट सेवेंटी फाइव फाउंडेशन दे हैव ऑर्गेनाइज इट राइट देन Union cabinet has given approval for nutrition based subsidy rates for the phosphatic potassium fertilizers phosphatic and potassium uh, fertilizers okay the amount is 60993.23 crores so let's move to the next one so most of the things is done okay for example this digital india risc 5 microprocessor program right so india also looks up to manufacture the indigenous microprocessor by the target year is december 2013 so for this this is the scheme that is launched digital india risc5 microprocessor dir5 program 
very important thing which you should remember then let's move to the next one so most of the things is covered you know so these are the some updates on these schemes which you should go through it and when you go through it always remember if you do not know the static part of it just know it for example look at this parvatmala scheme right in the union budget the parvatmala was discussed right now here the actual work has started that mou is signed between nhlml the state government for construction of rope bay in himachal pradesh under parvatmala yojana okay seven project of length 57.1 km at a cost of 3233 crore to be constructed in this state very important piece of news so with this we have come to the end of this lecture we wish you very good luck from team crack grade b happy and thank you learning